Alright guys, here is your test review for chapter 3, Uses of Derivatives. Alright, so number 1, it says, given that f of x equals negative 4 over x, choose the correct statement. Alright, and it talks about concavity. So what we need to do is we need to find the concavity of this. Alright, so, first thing we want to do is we want to get f prime. Alright, actually, sorry, not the first thing we want to do is find f prime. First thing we want to do is find f double prime. Alright, so let's find f double prime. Well, f prime of x is going to equal, and remember, take this and write it as negative 4 x to the negative 1. So that means our f prime is going to be 4x the negative squared and our f double prime will be negative 8x negative cubed which also equals negative 8 over x cubed all right now the next thing you want to do is find the criticals all right which is where f does not exist in this case um, our function does not exist at x equals 0. Okay, that's a does not exist case. Alright, and it, so our critical is, is x equals 0, and our f prime equals 0 actually does not apply in this case because to make this 0, you set the numerator to 0. Alright, so that actually doesn't apply here. Now, oops, I forgot, we can't draw a line in this program. So now we plot our critical, zero. All right. And now remember, it's it changes concavity. I'm sorry, I didn't change concavity. It's concave up. If it is positive, it's concave down. If it is negative, so let's try one on either side. Negative one. Plug in a negative one, we get positive. Plug in a one, we get negative. So we know that it is concave up from negative infinity to zero and concave down from zero to negative, I mean positive infinity. So which one of these matches? All right, the graph is concave upward from zero to infinity. Nope, doesn't work. The graph is concave upward. It's not concave upward the whole way. The graph is concave up from negative infinity to zero. And then this one has the whole thing again, so that's a no, and then we found one that works, so it's none of, so it's not none of the above. Alright. Well, there's number one. Remember when you sub you want to test the value on the other side of your critical point, plug it up into your um, F double prime. If it's positive it's concave up, if it's negative it's concave down. Alright. Moving along, let me slide this down, clear the ink. Okay, right, so it says let f of x be negative 8 minus, I mean x minus 8 cubed plus 6. The point 8, 6 is what? Alright, the point 8, 6 is what? So what we want to do is we want to find our f prime. All right, well, in this case, x prime of x is simply negative 3, 8, x minus 8, 8 squared. All right, now we want to set this equal to 0. Okay, divide negative 3 off, and that gets rid of that x minus 8 squared equals 0, so x equals 8, so that's our critical. Now we want to put that on a number line, so put 8 here, 7 here, 9 here, and plug it in. Alright, so if we put this into our equation, we plug it in with 7, we get positive. My pain quit working. I don't know why my pain quit working. 
hopefully it'll come back soon. Come on. There we go. Now it's working. Alright, so where was I? Oh yeah, the point eight six is what? Alright, so when we plug in 7... Plug in seven. We get up here. We get seven minus eight. Well, this will always be positive, regardless of what we put in. Multiply it by a negative. It comes out to be negative. Plug it in here. It comes out to be negative. So this is down. This is down. So it is a critical point, but it is not an extrema. All right, it's a critical point, but not an extrema because it doesn't change direction; it just goes down the whole time. Because this is our critical point, remember? So it just goes down the entire time. So therefore, it is not an extrema. Okay not an extreme. Alright, moving on. Number three, whoops. It says, find the values of x that give relative extrema for the function f of x equals this. Alright, so now we need to find our extrema. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find f prime of x. Alright. Where f prime of x comes out to 3x squared minus 42x plus 39. You can factor out a 3 and get x squared minus 14x plus 13. And we got to set that equal to 0. Well, you can divide both sides by 3 and get rid of that. So this will factor into x minus 1, x minus 13. So x equals 1 and 13 are our critical points. So what you want to do is plug those in. 1, 13. And what we want to do is we want to check them. So we're going to plug in 0. Let's plug in 2. And plug in 14. So if you plug 0 into this equation, you just get positive 39. So it's positive. If you plug in 2 to this equation, it comes out negative. If you plug 14 into this equation, it comes out positive. So that means it's going up on this interval, down here, and then goes back up. So that means that 1 is a max, and 13 is a min. So back up here, max at 1, min at 13. All right. Now, I will have to say, I looked over the answer key before I did this, and I did notice that a few of the answers on the answer key are wrong. All right, so go by the answers I give you in this video, not necessarily the ones on the answer key. All right, so, so there's that. 1's a max, 13 is a min. All right, number four. Let me clear my ink. Come on. There we go. Number four. Kind of the same deal, find the values of x that give extrema. So again, we need to find f prime. Well, that gives us 20x to the fourth, whoops, 20x to the fourth minus 20x cubed. Funny how that works out. Of course, you can divide the whole thing by 20 and get x to the fourth minus x cubed because we have to solve it for zero. Factor out an x cubed. You get x minus 1, so set that equal to 0, so x equals 0 and 1. Again, you want to plot those on a number line. 0, 1, those are our criticals. So if you want to test negative 1, let's test 1 half, and let's test 2. So when you plug negative 1, up into here, you get positive. 
when you plug in one half you get negative and you plug in two you get positive so that means this goes up and down and up again which makes zero a max and one a min all right zero is a max one is a min so zero is a max one's a min here we go that little negative was that that little negative shouldn't be there it should just be positive one all right number five says let f double prime equal negative 3x squared plus 9 and let f of x have these three critical numbers. Use second derivative test to determine which critical numbers, if any, are a relative minimum. Well, if you remember the second derivative test, okay, it was in the same video with the points of inflection, which was, I believe, two videos ago. All right. When you take your f double prime at c, and remember these are our c values because those are our critical points, all right, if f prime of c is greater than zero, then it is a minimum. That, that c is a minimum. If f double prime at c is less than zero, then x equals c is a maximum. So really all you gotta do for here is plug them in and see what happens. All right, so let's plug in negative 3, 0, and 3. All right, you plug in negative 3, you're going to get negative 3 times 9 plus 9, which is negative 27 plus 9, which is negative 18. All right, so it's less than 0, so that means it's a max. We, we're asking for a minimum, so that's out. And since we square, since it's x squared, negative and positive 3 are both to give us the same thing. So that's out. Now if we plug in 0, this part cancels out, leaving us with just 9. So since that's positive, that is our minimum, 0. All right, so D for number 5 is our correct answer. OK. Number 6 it says find all points of inflection over the function 4x cubed minus 36x squared plus 6. All right. So the first thing we want to do to find points of inflection is we need to get f double prime. All right. So let's find. Let's start out by getting f prime. Well, that's 12x squared minus 36 times 2 is 72x. Now find double prime. That's 24x minus 72. And now remember, points of inflection only happen when f double prime switches signs. Alright, so we need to find our criticals now. And then we're going to test the criticals to see if it changes signs. So we're going to factor out a 24 here. So if you factor out a 24, you get x minus, I'm sorry, we're not factoring out a 24, we're setting it equal to 0. What was I thinking? All right, add the 72. Well, we could have divided 24, but anyway, divide 24, divide 24. So x equals 3. Now let's do the number line thing. Put on 3. Let's check 2 and 4. That's our critical. So when you plug in 2 into here, you get 48 minus 72, which is going to give us a negative. When you plug in 4, you get 24 times 4, which is 96 minus 72, so it gives us a positive. Since f of f double prime chain signs at 3, that means x equals 3 is a point of inflection. All right. Now what you want to do, so it's looking like A is going to be our answer. Now what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that our y value will be negative 210. 
So what you want to do is take 3 and plug it in up here and verify that it does equal 210 and it does equal 210. Come on. I think it stopped working again. So the answer for number 6 is actually 3. There it comes. 3 and negative 210. All right. Because after you find this, x equals 3 is the point of inflection. Plug it back into here to figure out what it's going to be. All right. Moving on. Number seven, it says use a graphing utility to determine the open intervals where the graph is concave up or concave down. So what you want to do is you want to graph this one, the x plus five. I mean, sorry, not x plus five. Eight divided by x minus five plus one. And when you graph that, it looks kind of like this. Oops. At x equals 5, you have an asymptote. So this looks like this, and this looks like this. Alright, so this here is concave down from negative infinity to 5. And this here is concave up from 5 to infinity. So let's see which one matches. Concave up, negative 5, nope. Concave downward, it's not concave down the whole way. Concave downward from negative 5 to infinity. Concave upward from 5 to infinity. That one looks like it works. And then this one says it's concave down over the whole interval. Here, these two are basically the same answer. All right, so if you ruled one out, you can rule both of them out. And then, of course, it's not none of these because we found one that actually worked. All right, so that's how you do seven. Now, let's look at the last one, number eight. It says, given that x squared minus 4x plus 2 has a relative minimum at x equals 2, choose the correct statement. So, if we have a relative minimum at x equals 2. That means this graph is concave up. All right, so here's our relative minimum at x equals 2, which means this part of the graph, and remember your f prime, your derivative, is the slope of the tangent line. All right, so if you look here, if you drew a tangent line here, the slope would be positive. If I drew a tangent line over here, this slope would be negative, which means the slopes from negative infinity to 2 are all going to be negative. So that means that f prime is negative on that interval. And then over here, from 2 to positive infinity, f prime is positive on that interval. So if you look here, two of these answers actually work. F prime is positive on the interval from 2 to infinity. Yes. So F prime is negative on the interval from 2 to infinity. No. F prime is negative on the interval from negative 2 to infinity. Yes, that one works as well. Positive on the whole interval, no, and not none of these. So for number 8, there's actually two of them that work. All right. On the test, because I double check the test on this one. On the test, only one of them works. But here, hey, both of them work. All right. But as long as you know how to find the answer, you're good to go. All right, and that's how you find the answer. Okay, so this has been your test review. It's almost 20 minutes long, not quite. So yep, just make sure you're ready for this tomorrow. And like I said, a few of the answers on the answer key were wrong. I think it was two of them. I think it was two of them. So I just wanted to double check it. So I double checked it, and yep, the testing software did have a couple of them wrong. So hey, whatever. Can't trust that thing anymore. So, yeah. Trust my answers over the ones on the answer key because whoever makes the testing software does get a couple of them wrong here and there. So, and look at that, my smart slate's dying. All right, well, view this as many times as you need to and come in ready to take test tomorrow. See you tomorrow. tomorrow.